Hello, I'm Ann Grabiel. I'm an institute professor at MIT. We work on structures in the brain called the basal ganglia, which are right underneath the outer rind of the brain. These deep parts have a lot to do with organizing what we do. All these kind of motor patterns that we either are born with or we develop and become very habitual. A lot of our habits rely on these deep parts. It turns out, quite contrary to expectation, that these deep parts of the brain send their outputs to that outer rind, and moreover, they target the frontal lobes of the brain. And the frontal lobes of the brain, we think, have to do with the very high-level functions that involve memory and thinking and planning ahead. So there's the puzzle. How can this deep, apparently primordial part of our brain have such a big influence on this thinking cap? That's what we're trying to figure out. These deep structures are implicated in an amazing array of disorders. In the motor realm, we know of Parkinson's disease, Huntington's disease, dystonias, of which there are many, neuropsychiatric disorders, obsessive compulsive disorder, Tourette syndrome, depression, bipolar disorder, or mania, hypomania for sure. And the latest thinking is that even aspects of schizophrenia, basal ganglia disorders are terrible afflictions in terms of human suffering because so very often the patient is smart, aware, alert enough, and knows that this malady is affecting him or her and is powerless, really, to, to stop it or to change it. And that's a curse. The fact that you can want to do something, you can voluntarily want to do something, and you simply cannot translate that wanting to do something into action. We gotta do something. One example of pure research maybe helping is that we found tissue compartments in these great basal ganglia that turn out to be differentially affected in a number of disorders that affect humans. The chemicals that are differentially distributed in these two tissues are the very chemicals with which the brain does its communicating. It turns out that in the basal ganglia there are different pathways, different nerve circuits, different neural circuits that are basically competing with one another. Do it, don't do it. Do it more, do it less. And so for some of these disorders, I think the do-it-more pathways become dominant. So in fact, you just keep releasing the behavior in the case of Parkinson's, kind of the opposite. You don't do it enough. And the little compartments we found, we think, are part of that evaluator system. The other half of our work is on how we develop habits. It turns out that a lot of our habits are learned. We have many different experiments going on in the lab where little mice or rats learn routines of behavior, and they usually learn them to get reward, and it turns out these deep parts of the brain probably impart our evaluation systems. So you do something, seems pretty good, gives you some reward, so you tend to do it again, and we think these deep parts of the brain are critical for that evaluation and eventual stamping in of habits and routines. We would just love to know enough about how the plasticity of the basal ganglia, that is the modifiability of these systems, how that modifiability can fine tune thoughts and feelings and movements. We think we can get close to that, but we think we're gonna to have to combine molecular biology and a bunch of systems neuroscience methods. If you hit on an important gene, and I, I really hope we have, then that gene opens all kinds of pathways into mechanisms that, that produce disorders that affect us. So, so these are very powerful ways in which a, quote, pure scientist can actually have a very, very large influence on uh, the clinical fields.